think both come in with a big chip on their shoulder. And Tim, this fight went to a purse bid where Shakur Stevenson, the challenger, is getting the lion's share of 63 to 37%. And that goes to the disrespect that Jamel continues to feel as the champion, and he is disregarded but, but in the why? long way. But why does he get the lion's share? He's not the champion. The champion is normally, typically, the one that gets the lion's share. And what I, from what I'm hearing, and what's been spoken publicly, is that the fights are not, the fight, the tickets are not selling that well. So is Shakur Stevenson a household name? No, he's not. He's still working on that. So why didn't Herring get the lion's share? But the thing that sticks out to me about that, Mark, is, is that you had Stevenson say that the African guy was strong, you know, and I wanted to be safe. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't getting clipped with a big shot. Well, and then he said, well, Herring doesn't punch as hard. So does that mean that we're going to get a more physical, more aggressive Shakur Stevenson? Because I hope. That's what I want to see. And typically, we don't get to. Let me start right there. It's a uh, fight week. Um, WBO, he's the interim champion, correct? 130 pound. Let me see. Was the interim champion? Yeah, WBO, 130 pound interim champion, 16 and 0 with eight KOs. Shakira Stevenson, 24 years old, is going to be taking on 35 year old Jamel Herring. 23 and 2 with 11 KOs. Now, he's racked up some nice solid wins outside of the Jonathan Aquindo. That was some bullshit. And Lord knows, did Twitter and social media let him and his wife have it? <laughs> but they survived because they beat Carl Frampton in a fight where basically he was, even though that he was the champion, he was supposed to lose. So Masayuki, um, Masayuki Ito, a fight that a lot of people felt he was supposed to lose. Lamont Roach, a lot of people were thinking he was going to lose. Carl Frampton, you know, a lot of people thought he was going to lose. And now he's fighting Shakur Stevenson. And from my understanding, a lot of people think he's going to lose this too. I'm not writing him off yet. He's very fun. Damn, they could have got him a better picture for his lineup. This picture old though. In my personal opinion, it's hard to count Jamel Herring out because he has all of the quality. He can box. Like he can actually box. He's not just some 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 guy going out there pressure fighting power punching throwing punches he can like really really fight looking at the card where is the undercard let me go check real quick and see who's on his undercard i believe it's xander zayas and a couple of other fighters but anyway i believe tim bradley regarding the fact that the fight's really not selling and shakira stevenson he's not really known you know He's getting, you know, somewhat there and some of the things he's known for outside of the ring, like fighting and shit, you know, but he's not really like a name that really, really rings bells. And a lot of people were wondering how this event would do down in Atlanta because Atlanta right now is a growing fight town. And if Timothy, if what Tim Bradley is saying is true about the tickets not selling, I believe him because, you know, everybody's not Tank. Tank, you know, has a large following in, e in either of these guys, neither of these guys. Herring or Shakur Stevenson is not really like known, like, you know, household names or no, or I'm not saying Tank really is, but these guys are not as known as Tank. Now, we don't know what the walk up is going to be. Atlantic is one of them type of towns where, from my understanding, people may be like, oh, shit, it's a fight tonight. All right, yeah, let's go, let's go to that joint. You know, it might be like that. We might have, you know, close to a sellout during fight night. Who knows? The final press conference is going to be on Thursday. It's Tuesday right now. I believe it's at 1 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be here live streaming the press conference, looking at the 130 pound division as a whole. Let's talk about what's next for the winner. I was actually surprised to hear that um, Emmanuel Navarrete is going to be moving up in weight and likely is going to be the next opponent for Oscar Valdez, T or no T. The WBA situation is being resolved where you're going to have um, Roger Gutierrez taking on Chris Colbert to be the only WBA champion at 130 uh, pounds because the WBA is, has been forced or being forced to get rid of those belts. The IBF situation is still a mess. Last I checked, Rakamov and Ogawa was supposed to fight, but I believe it's now gonna be Rakamov versus Fuzil or whatever. Jamel Herring has been openly talking about, you know, he's at the end of the road regarding his career. But if he wins against um, Shakur Stevenson, does he retire? 
or does he go on to try to, you know, unify the division? But the way things are set up between Colbert and Gutierrez and Rockamoff and whatever they're going to do with the IBF, you know, that's at least another year, at least, you know, before he's able to unify, unless he fights the winner of um, what's supposed to be Valdez versus Navarrete, which, in my personal opinion, the winner of Herring versus Shakur should fight, uh, should fight Oscar de Valdez. But I understand, you know, Mexican fighters, you know, it's going to sell more. 130 pounds is pretty much, you know, all over the place right now. But according to this article from ESPN, the fight didn't go to purse bid, and I forgot. And basically, both of them will earn at least 1.5 million. And that purse bid situation is just some bullshit. Like, how would the challenger have been getting more? How does that even work? I need to go back and read those uh, those uh, rules. And also, um, uh, Jamel Herring is also an MTK global fighter. I did get a, I did get to check out um, ESPN's and Top Rings Blood, Sweat, and Tears. They have two episodes. Not really nothing that sticks out outside of Shakur Stevenson playing the vil the villain and pretty much being the one to try to, you know, talk shit to sell his fight. And Jamel Herring has really pretty much not been really um, interested in it. Two southpaws facing one another. We don't. It's uncommon in the sport. But I know one thing. When you do have two southpaws together, the one that pressures is typically the one that controls the fight. You know, it's a, it's a lot to unpack here, but I'll just say this. I, I don't think it's any real bad blood. You know, like Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, that was real bad blood. It's just competitiveness. Shakur Stevenson is one of the most competitive people I know, and I'm extremely competitive. And, you know, Jamel Herring is competitive, too. I just think his, you know, competitiveness is more internal, and he doesn't express it as much as Shakur. But it's no bad blood. I think when all is said and done, they'll shake hands and keep it moving. Um, in terms of the fight, you know, the thing about – being a young fighter on the way up, Shakur is 24 years old. He's still trying to find himself. They are evolving and trying to figure things out, but it's happening in real time where media and fans get to critique every single move. Now, that comes with the territory. Whether they realize it or not, that's what they signed up for. But that's the challenge that young fighters have to go through, but it's good for them because it, it teaches you to grow up. It lets you know that everybody's not going to love you. And that element of sometimes hate, sometimes just critique, that's good. It keeps you humble and it keeps you working. It keeps you getting up early and staying late in that gym. So I think that was a good thing for Shakur. I think he's trying to prove that he's more than what people saw in his last fight. Not a bad thing, though, if you don't look that great and you win every single round. But he's still evolving, and I think you're going to see a better Shakur in this fight with Jamel Herring. And Jamel Herring, at his age and at this stage in his career, he has to show once again that the Frampton fight wasn't a fluke. We just saw him against Jonathan Akendo. He didn't fare well, not just physically, but mentally and psychologically. So for a fighter, you're always just as good as what you did the last. And that's what I'm concerned about. See, my gut is saying like, yo, Shakur on paper, you know, is the better fighter. And he has the ability to outbox um, Jamel Herring from what we've seen from him so far. Jamel Herring has the experience and he's grown as a fighter you know, like pretty much each year. I mean, the Quindo that was, you know, you know, a stutter step. But nonetheless, he's a fighter that you really can't count out. And we've seen that he's not just a walk forward type of guy. Like he actually has boxing ability in the camp with uh, Bo Mack, Terrence Crawford, guys like Amir Khan, you know, so he's got the pedigree. But only time will tell, man, we will see. I will be here this weekend covering the fight. It's going to be um in the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. It's going to be on regular ESPN, and I'm really interested in what the winner is going to do because even right now, Shakur Stevenson is talking about moving to 135 pounds. Um, Jamel Herring, I don't think he would move up. I think he would retire before he actually moves up, just my personal opinion. But I don't know, man. I'm not counting him out. I'm not counting him out. So I'm going to go ahead and not stay on the fence to say that I am picking Shakur Stevenson, but I'm really not confident in that. It's history controversy with fightb360.com. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe.